You're listening to The Shiny Sofa, the official podcast from Latex 24-7, the premier online magazine dedicated to latex fashion news, reviews, and interviews. Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of The Shiny Sofa. Coming up on the show, we talk about Pin Noir and FBLD latex, latex at the Grammys, and Vex latex on the big screen. Joining us today, Zona of Eustratia Latex, Stacey. Second skin like nature. And I thought that it was a great contrast to add those period influences, something that you would not necessarily see together. So take a seat on the sofa, make yourself comfortable, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, via latex247.co.uk. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for episode number 11 of The Shiny Sofa, Latex Fashion Podcast brought to you by Latex 24-7. Each episode we welcome a special guest and I'm so pleased to say that today we're joined by Latex designer Stacey, who's the owner of Eustratia Hi. Latex. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? You okay? Very well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. It's a um, pleasure to have you here and um, I'm sure we'll have Sure, I'll have plenty to talk about over the next hour or so, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. about my work. (laughs) Cool. Well, here at The Shining Sofa, we'd like to find out a little bit more about what makes our guests tick. With a segment of the show we call The Quick Fire Round. We've got a huge list of questions which we feed into our random generator, and our guest has 60 seconds to answer as many quick fire questions as they can before the time runs out. You ready, Stacey? I'm ready. Cool. That's uh, that's going for it then. Here we go. City or country? Country. Winter or summer? Summer. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. Coffee or tea? Tea. Ketchup or mayonnaise? Ketchup. Kindle or paperback? Paperback. Paris or New York? Uh, I haven't been to New York. Um... But I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to say Paris. Cool. Rap or rock? Rock. Christmas or birthday? Birthday. Read a book or watch a movie? It depends how I'm feeling. <laughs> camera shy or camera hog? Uh, camera hog. Everybody knows. Definitely, definitely. Glass half full or glass half empty? Oh, it depends on the day, but I'm going to be positive and say half full. Winner. Large crowd or small party? Uh, small party. Pepsi or Coke? Wrong Coke. And that sound means we reached the end of that. I make that that you got a grand total of 14. Well done, Stace. Well done. I'm sure there were people who got more, but... <laughs> couple but um you're certainly not on the bottom of the pile with that that's 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 a, that's a good effort that one good effort yeah Fab. cheers for that thank you so let's take a look at some of the recent latex clothing and fashion news that we've featured over on latex247.co.uk first of all we had a music festival over in Italy called the San Remo Music Festival, which featured Italian rapper Big Mama wearing a uh, Vin Noir uh, catsuit um, and also featured uh, Gaia Dazzles um, as is wearing um, an FBLD. That was a, uh, a latex corset, actually. Yep. Both both appeared on stage. Both, in fact, they in fact they performed together in in, in the same uh, same 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 song, um, singing "Lady Marmalade." I believe was uh, was was the track. So, um, probably probably a perfect choice really for, for for the outfits they were wearing. It was it was sensual and sexy, and and then I think really really showed off that that sort of uh, powerful image that latex can produce when it's when it's. Rest correctly and, and and absolutely 
I did think that the the performers that were wearing latex did stand out quite a lot more than the other ones, though. Yeah. I think they should have coordinated and all worn latex, personally. Yes, yeah, you're right. I think they were, they were, they were for them in the group of them, rightly, from the, the yeah. hotel. You say it was, it was two, two in latex and two out of latex. And yes, they, they, they definitely stood out, but maybe that's just the fact we noticed it far more than some people do. But uh, um, yeah, um, Bin Noir's cat, uh, cat suit was, was, was typically phenomenal really for, for that brand you know the, the, that kind of spider's web approach of, of, of the latex yeah i really um, love the organic look of that applique that they do um yeah there's something reminiscent of like the way demonic energy taking over the body is portrayed in anime i don't remember what the specific reference is but i'm sure i've seen that somewhere before and that's what it always reminds me of um yeah i love how symmetrical they get it. it it always looks right and yeah it looks great in all of the different colors i really love that and i thought that it really suited big mama i think i've seen her wear something from them before and i think that their designs look fantastic on her every single time yeah definitely yeah i think in fact i think i think it was last year at the same festival she wore a similar dress okay. um but yeah you, you without a doubt dips suits her perfectly and in the and the corset cool from FBLD was um featured a kind of lacing front to it oh, um yeah, yeah. Worn, worn with a sh- uh, sort of chiffon dress I, th- I think that was that was a really, really really nice combination latex over like a sheer fabric I think that that yeah. contrast in texture always gets me I love doing it as well um shears and latex just go fantastic together and it is great to see more corsets coming out in like mainstream fashion. Corsets were my fa- first love. I loved corsets even before I knew about latex. So <laughs> um, for me, it is always exciting with that underwear as outerwear trend comes back onto the runway because yeah. I feel like there is so much potential. And from this article, I also got to find out about a new designer because I did not know about FBLD latex. I'd never heard of them before, so it's it's good to find out about new brands. Yeah, awesome. Fab, fab. Uh, moving on then. Um, it was, well, it's 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 award season at the moment. Um, seems like every weekend there's some other award show going on somewhere across the globe. Um Back in the beginning of February, it was the, the Grammys, um, and which just seems to be the norm these days. It was it was a combination of Atsuka Kudo and Avalano. Um, we saw uh, Zooey Hall um, wearing their uh, absolutely phenomenal ball gown, um, which is their uh, scallop cup one. Oh yeah, um, love the gorgeous train, lovely, lovely cut around uh, around the uh, the breast area, um, and then we also saw um, Bunny Exo, who was also wearing a, a Atsuko Kudo gown in a very eye catching red colour, um, and then we had Avalano being uh, repped by uh, Alexandra Ambrosio. Um, yeah, two brands who just consistently seem to just just be there at every every major celebrity event these days. Um, it's almost a disappointment when there's there's, there's, there's no, they're not featured. So, what's uh, what's what's your kind of view on the the, the, the celebrity type I side of things? I do think we're things that... seeing more and more latex ball gowns on the runway. Like every single yeah. time, there is more of them. And, yeah. you know, I think it's a great choice. I think it's fantastic that people are finally buying latex ball gowns because for years, like, they existed, but nobody was really buying them. And I had a few in my collection, and everybody was like, wow, this is an amazing dress, but where would you ever wear it? Now they know because everybody <laughs> to every award ceremony. <laughs> Alessandra Ambrosio in Avalano, I think this was like a great choice for her because although it is a ball gown, it is like simply elegant. The style yes. lines of this garment are very simple. And yeah. because she has an amazing body, this is the perfect dress for her to wear to show it off. Uh, so just, um, you know, pure and simple. She also chose a nice shiny color. 
um, to reflect the the lights nicely. I'm sure her pictures all looked amazing. So great choice yeah. by her. And the Yetsuko good Kudo gowns, I think like the silhouette was quite similar on both of them. Um, I really love that they have that train on the back. So it's not just yeah. like a standard fishtail. Um, yeah. You have that extra volume on the back that um, I think just makes them even more special for the red carpet. Yeah, good word, good word. Yeah, yeah, very special and completely agree with your, what you what you say there, Stacey, about uh, Alexandra's dress. It's um, proof that sometimes the, the simplistic designs can actually be the most kind of eye catching and and, and and appealing in, in you know it's the just, just yeah looks look look phenomenal read it read it the last news article we're going to look at then um is uh, something that I'm, I'm i'm sure stacy's something that you can probably relate to quite uh, quite closely with the kind of Edwardian gothic victorian sort of style um it was uh, the recent Brit Awards winner, actually, um, won, won, several, won several awards at the weekend over uh, the Brit Awards uh, for the film Poor Things. Um, predominantly, we featured it for the, the costume designs of, of Holly Waddington, who I believe actually did win the best costume designer at the, at the Brit Awards. Well, she did it. Um, so the, uh, the, 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 the designs were... Uh, worn by the, the cast, and in particular, it was the the Vex uh, made um, condom jacket, as they call it. Um, in fact, Holly actually mentioned that that was what she was thinking of at the time: was that it was it was it's the, it's the color of a, a traditional condom. And that I, I kind of feel laugh actually because I was thinking if I had designed something like this for university and I had given that reasoning behind it, it would have been shut down by my tutor. <laughs> Like, oh, you can't literally take something that looks like a condom and say that it's a condom. Do you know what? <laughs> that, that is like way too basic and not conceptual. <laughs> clearly, clearly, we're just years ahead of the trend there, weren't you, Stacey? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 great to see. Great to see that our favorite material up on the big screen being being shown there to to people that maybe wouldn't wouldn't see it otherwise and. Um, I think the kind of that contrast between the um, the old fashioned designs of the clothing, but also that futuristic style of, of of the film was quite something, really. That is the thing that I love most about it. Um, I think you know this film is interesting on so many levels. Um, but the thing that I love the most is the wardrobe. Of course, it has um, many different elements that are very obviously appealing to me. It has like the voluminous puff sleeves. It has ruffles. Um, and the thing that I find most interesting is the fact that they're mixing stylistic influences from different eras um, like to put them together in this movie i think yeah. the director said this gives like a more timeless message on feminism so it could be like a woman from any time who is experiencing these things and i thought that was a really interesting way to to bring that across um, yeah but also purely from like a visual aspect um, as I said earlier in the interview, I really enjoy this theme of retrofuturism, and I think that it is coming back now with yeah. films like this. Um, and of course, the condom coat fits into that as well. Um, as we were discussing earlier, uh, latex does have that kind of futuristic feel to it, and Definitely. I don't know, like this translucent coat, it kind of a little bit is like Blade Runner. Yeah. Can you see like a, yeah. a comparison yeah. there, maybe? Definitely. Um yeah. I think that it's interesting that that she wore it for for the brothel scene and also in the snow. Because yeah. I mean I can I can see the irony of like wearing latex in the snow because I have done it myself. <laughs> and I, I it's not warm. 
So I think there's a <laughs> kind of play going on of, of this like um, really light protection. So that that ties in with the with the condom as well, but also yeah. with the fact that it is freezing and she's wearing something that not only is through but is also um, very thin and not warm in the slightest. Yeah, very very symbolic without a doubt, and um, yeah, nice, very 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 nice addition to a a phenomenal film, um, and yeah, was. Always great to see Vex Latex out there and um, showing the world how it's done. So uh, yeah, well, that's well, cheers, Stacey. I think that's um, that's it. That's it for now. We'll uh, we'll be back to speak more after these uh, short messages. You're listening to the Shiny Sofa, the official podcast from Latex Twenty Four Seven, the premier online magazine dedicated to latex fashion news, reviews, and interviews. Welcome back to Shiny Sofa, latex fashion podcast brought to you by Latex Twenty Four Seven. Joining us again this episode, latex designer Stacy of Eustratia Latex. Welcome back, Stacy. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have you here. Um, I'm going to start with a, a question that I kind of ask a number of designers that I have on on, on, the, on the show. Has, has fashion always been a, a, a passion of, of yours for, for most of your life, or was it something that you've only discovered recently? And um, how, how did that sort of lead you to doing education and, and university courses and things you did? Okay, so growing up, I spent a lot of time at my grandmother's house. She was a seamstress, Uh and so I was exposed to a lot of elements related to fashion from a young age. Um, I went to university knowing that I wanted to start my own fashion brand and knowing that I likely wanted to work with latex. So actually, I decided this in advance of my higher education. And I tried to select a course that would include business elements because I knew that I wanted to start a business. Ultimately, though, I don't think that any kind of institutional environment such as university can prepare you to actually starting a real world business. Yeah, definitely. The the the, 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 the theories are very different to the, the practice, isn't it, without a doubt? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Did, did so that, that that obviously whilst that was a great experience, I'm sure. Um it it must have, by the sounds of it, it sort of changed your perceptions about actually running a business, you know, from from taking it from that theoretical side to practical. It it did definitely. Um I am a conceptual designer and I do love the creative aspect and finding all of the the meanings behind the collection. But in in practice, I feel like that is not what people want in a commercial aspect when they're buying clothes. It is yep. often a lot more simple. They just want yep. clothes that look good and that they can imagine themselves wearing something more accessible. And yep. that is um, something that I feel was not a focus in university and something that I really kind of learn to do myself after starting the business okay okay yeah that's uh that's understandable understandable so was was university your your kind of first experience of, of working in the industry or, or what did were there sort of apprenticeships and things that you did or you know um... okay so i did what is called a sandwich course so i did three years of um university and one year of placement uh after a few unsuccessful interviews where i felt like i couldn't be myself i sourced my own placement and worked for cyberdog in camden which okay yeah really enjoyed that was an amazing experience for me at the time because it is a brand that i really admire and still have a great relationship with well bad bad so you touched on it very briefly there at the beginning of that Basically, that you, 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 you kind of decided from very early on that you wanted to go down the latex clothing and fashion direction. 
where did that interest in latex fashion and, and clothing come from? What was your what was your first exposure to the material and I suppose what 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 drew you to what drew you towards it versus traditional material, shall we say? Okay, so I first heard about latex clothing in early two thousand and four while I was still living in Greece. So I had plenty of time to imagine it before finally seeing it in person when I moved to London in the summer of that year. Uh, I first saw it in person, I think, in Camden at Breathless, which okay, yeah. does not exist anymore, but it did at the time. Um, the first thing that really intrigued me about latex clothing were the seams. I know this is not what most <laughs> but for me, this is what really set it apart from different clothing um, that I'd seen. Obviously, I mentioned previously my grandmother was a seamstress, so I knew how to put together um, traditional clothing way before I went to university. Yeah, but this this clothing was different. Um, the seams were so smooth, and they were obviously not sewn, and that intrigued me. I wanted to know how to make it, and that is what um, kind of started my my interest in it. I was also immediately drawn to the rubbery feel of the material. I think it it's kind of simultaneously natural and otherworldly. And it reminded sure. yeah. me of the type of clothing that I don't know, you see in like anime and you think that clothing is not real. Like somebody could not really create that in real life and make it look like that. Um but I think latex is as close to that kind of fantasy element as you can get and that is something that I really love about it. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. It's uh it's unique, it's different. Um, and that's, yeah, certainly certainly one of the reasons a lot of people are, are drawn to it without a doubt. So tell us a little bit then about how you, how you, how you started the brand and, and, and when it was formed. What's, what's, what's the meaning behind the brand for start off? Okay, so Eustratia was formed in my final year of university. I came up with the name, the logo, the USP and the original designs ahead of my final collection. The name is an Anglicanized version of my first name, which I inherited from my Greek grandmother, the aforementioned okay. Eustra. Um, yeah. It means the good or right way in regards to the path or road that you take. So it means the good road, basically, if we're, if we're going to do like a basic translation. Yeah, and okay. To me, this is, I don't know, it's a good name for a, for a clothing brand. Um, because of the kind of different nuances in that in that meaning also it is kind of a way to continue my grandmother's legacy something that she did not want me to do making <laughs> according to her was a thankless task um, <laughs> consuming um but you know it is what it is and i do actually really enjoy it fab fab so was it was it was it was was brand created as soon as you left university? Was that that, that instant decision then that was like, right, this is it, I'm going to go for it? Well, this is yes, it was created while I was at university and I did make the designs. I did, I think, do a few photo shoots with them. And, okay. And um, I kind of launched the brand on social media, I think, and then officially made it a business in the January following my graduation. Cool, cool. What was the uh, what was the most nerve wracking part of, of starting the business and well, the brand? And, and I think the what, what... most nerve wracking part of starting any business um, is the the fear of failure, and uh -huh. also um, the fear of not having enough resources. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that was it for me as well. Um, it was a big help to be able to live with my parents for the first two years of my business. Um, I know that cash flow can be a huge issue for new businesses. I saw a lot of other designers fail because of such issues. Like sometimes you have to buy a lot of materials to of course, yeah. orders that you have. And if you if you don't have any backup, it can be difficult to create the orders, pay for your bills, send out the orders and still have money left over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's uh yeah. Huge outlay, huge, huge costs and 
Um, particularly when you're dealing with something that's a little bit niche like latex, it's 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 expensive product to buy, isn't it? To be able to exactly. have the raw materials right there. Um, the latex, it's all of the equipment that you need to make it. Um, I don't know, trims, fastenings, uh, presses, all the rest of it. So for me, it was mostly um, mostly a financial issue. I didn't have any issues with creativity or finding designs to make or having anybody to model it uh, all of those things came very easily to me because I was already in that kind of scene in that kind of setup I had modeled for years I had the contacts um yeah it all when it was all very easy and natural from that point of view well what if, if, if you could pinpoint something that you think makes what you do both in brand terms and these the designs different to 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 and, and unique to other designers what uh, what do you think that would that would be um i think first of all it is the unique basic shapes um a lot of the basic shapes that i started doing such as like the underbust hot pants um, yeah. they did not exist prior uh, as far as i'm aware uh the big one obviously is the latex lace um, yeah, of course, Alex, yeah. It's net the fusion fabrics that I do. I developed that also while I was at university. It was kind of my answer to printed latex, which was sort of the okay. that existed at the time with a pattern. Okay, interesting. There was yeah. no patterned latex at this time. No. Uh, apart from Atsuka Kudo did those, those beautiful lace and mesh prints, which were fantastic. The only problem with them was that they were, they did rub off. After a while, uh, okay. the, the print wasn't permanent. So I wanted to yeah. find a solution to be able to make a beautiful pattern on the latex that didn't rub off. Uh, and that's when I started using the different lace fabrics and um, experimenting with different ways of putting them on the latex. I um, decided to focus on this way that I do now which is fusing it together and making the latex lace I did also try laser cutting which I know a lot of other people are very successful with now yeah um, yeah that didn't work very well for me at the time so I left it but yeah I tried a few different um ways of of making it work and I'm just really happy with this one and now I do mesh and I also do like another one with like a finer mesh and glitter in it um there are a few few different yeah it's 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 great to see that there can be that diversity you know it's it's as you should quite right to say stacy you know it was going back a decade or so it was it was it was generally always very much plain bold colors and that was it wasn't it and and yeah. there is so there much is more that can be done with it now um another thing that i developed for my brand which i thought was very different at the time was the period influences um, yeah. so like the elizabethan um, pleated ruffs and things like that ruffles did exist but like nobody was really taking so many historical influences into yeah. the at the time it wasn't something that was very popular and for me it was very interesting because of like this idea of retro futurism uh, like latex has this kind of innate futuristic look with its kind of rubbery appearance and its shine yeah. and its like second skin like nature and I thought that it was a great contrast to add those kind of um, I don't know like more period influences something that you would not necessarily see together yeah yeah, I like that. And do you know what? I've, I've I've never I've never thought about that contrast before. But now that you say it, it's yeah, it's 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 definitely definitely there in in what you produce. And yeah, that's um, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That's that's a very very good mix. I like that one a lot. Thank you. Latex clothing often means different things to to different people. Um, out, uh, some people consider it to be empowering. Some people consider it to be outlandish. What what does latex fashion mean to you? Uh, to me, the the thing that I love most about latex fashion is more the way that the wearer treats the latex. Let me explain. 
the thing I love about it is that it is an item to be cherished. People buy latex for a, a special occasion, and because yep. it requires particular methods of care, they treat it like a garment is supposed to be treated. They take it off carefully. They wash it. They pack it. They put it in a safe place. Um, it also needs to be shined before you wear it. So you have that like tactile element of like you're looking after the latex and you're making it look its best just as it makes you look your best. Yeah. So I hate the idea of throwaway fashion and how people don't appreciate the effort that went into creating their clothes. And I think with latex, we have refound this appreciation. I also love the fact that people normally buy it for special events, so it makes them feel a certain way, or it creates, um, I don't know, an alter ego or a character for them to become, and it is um, part of this this narrative that makes them their best self, um, and that is something that I really like about it. There is, of course, a sensory aspect. I'm sure other people have said this as well. It is a of common, course, yeah common thing you know amongst latex lovers i love gentle support and the way it alters the contours of the body i love the smell of it and the sound that it makes when you move uh i think that is yeah quite quite yeah it's latex it's, lovers to enjoy it's, it's, that aspect without doubt it's, it's a very it's a very tactile material isn't it it's something that that people like to touch and and you know but yeah you, you're right we've spoken to people before that uh, uh, um out modeling it on on you know out, out in public and the reaction that we hear so much is people just members of the public want to come and, and kind of touch it because they don't understand how it feels and what it's like you know and then yeah have it having that um having that ability to to draw people in to to do that is 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 quite something yeah it is indeed i always enjoy introducing new people to latex Definitely, us too, us too, without a doubt, without a doubt. So, outside of the brand, Eustratia, what are your favourite latex garments to wear and, and, and when and where might, 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 might they come up? Okay. It's the sort of thing that, that you sort of wear with other, gar- with other uh, uh, garments and ensembles and stuff? Or I actually haven't worn latex that I haven't made myself for a long time but i will tell you about some things from different designers that i have worn and that i really like okay so for the last latex dress that i bought for myself that um has not been made by me was by lacing lilith and it was the mm-hmm. victorian mini dress um paul's craftsmanship is amazing i think he's one of the like top latex designers out there uh, i also have this neck piece from amstatic which she made for me as a gift and it's kind of like a mixed media piece. It has like um, it has like a gemstone in it, and it's all like folded loops. And that is wow. beautiful. Amy is one of the most creative people that I've ever met. And I also have I have a studded choker and cuff set by Ula Latex, who I think do not trade anymore, or they don't make. Latex. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I modelled for them at Torture Garden, and I got these items as a gift. And actually, I do still wear them sometimes because they have that like edgy look. Um, I think, yeah, I wore them to a punk gig recently. Perfect, perfect place for them. Yeah, like that, like that a lot, like that a lot. Your your designs include a, a, a wide variety, really, of, uh, of apparel, um, dresses, briefs, bras, stockings, body suits, accessories. As you say, you've mentioned the ruffles and things that that you you, you make. Um, what what are the the most popular items that you design and sell, and uh, are, there, are there sort of really frequent requests for specific items or, or genres of items? Yeah, so I think like best sellers only change every year or two because I don't know, like people seem to want the same kind of garment over and over again. Okay, so yeah. the role was popular always pretty yeah. popular. Stockings are very popular; they are a consistent seller for me. Um, I always sell a lot of stockings. At the moment, apparel-wise, I would say that the elegant pencil dress with the latex mesh collar is my bestseller. Okay, yeah, I think. yeah. Um, but previously, um, 
previously for a few years. It was the cop bodysuit and the cop top. They have been yeah. very popular. And then before that, um, it was the unicorn lingerie. I don't know if anybody remembers that. It's like not really that popular at the moment, but unicorns were like so big a few years ago. And that, <laughs> that was like such a big bestseller. It was like the best thing I'd ever made. <laughs> the funny thing is that I didn't really even like it that much. I thought that it was, um, you know, not com- com- conceptually complex enough for for my designer brain. Like I thought it was a more simple product. But like I said before, um, sometimes simplicity is what what people want because they can really understand it and relate to it. Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that simplicity gives people the opportunity to to experiment and and, and try things that, that maybe they wouldn't they wouldn't do otherwise so um yeah awesome what do you what do you enjoy most about wearing latex and 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 so working with latex I was thinking, what, what do you enjoy most about working with latex and and what are the biggest challenges that you you get working with the material um, um the thing that i really enjoy about it actually is shaping it with my hands um i always describe working with latex as a cross between sculpture and sewing because yeah. it is kind of like a little bit like both you are joining seams but you are shaping them with your hand which is why making latex is a skill because you have to get that kind of like tug right to be able to create the the nice seams and I think that is the thing that I really like about it. That's why I really like creating the pleats and making like the more voluminous items and um, I don't know, and creating the lace as well with like the layers, um, yeah. well, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what I enjoy most about it. The rest of it is kind of similar, I would say, to, to regular clothing design. Yeah, kind of, kind of back to that tactile nature, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that begs the question then of, of in, in your experience and your many, many years of working with the material, do you consider that latex is a versatile uh, medium to, to work with? And, and how easy is it to actually create the, those, those designs of your dreams? Do you, do you think it's easier or more, more complex than maybe traditional materials might be. Okay, so creating things with latex, like I said, it is a skill. So it's a skill that you have to learn. But once you have that base understanding of the material, I think that creating with latex is a lot more simple than creating with um, traditional woven or knitted fabrics. Um, And that's because not as many processes are involved. You just need like the few tools that you have in front of you, and your hands and a sheet of latex you can cut it in any direction in any shape and as long as you have some some glue and some thinner you can you can shape it however you want you don't need to (laughs) add facings to it or like you know complicated sewing procedures and you don't need all of these like industrial machines that do all of these different stitches um and i i find that really freeing because I always found, um, I don't know, going through all of the processes and sewing everything in the in the right order, very stressful yeah. while I was <laughs> And I feel like working with latex has really freed me from a lot of these constraints. Also, the fact that there's like no grain on the fabric, that's also great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your pattern pieces in however you like. Um, I really enjoy that. I like breaking the rules, and I think that latex allows you to do that. Um, yeah, and just the fact that you can stick stick it to itself, um, I find that really pleasing because you can just add things to it. So you can like cut out a shape like an applique, and you just stick it on, and then it is there. It's part of the garment. Amazing. Fab. Fab. So, um, yeah, it's very clear that there's... Well, yeah, it's very clear that that passion that you've got for Stacey's is, is, is definitely definitely coming across without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, as well as designing and manufacturing and making and selling and advertising and everything that you, that you do, um, you, you also 
model quite a lot of the garments that you produce for social media, the websites. Um, and with that, you, you clearly take a lot of inspiration from classical and the, the sort of Edwardian and, and, and Gothic aesthetic. Um, there was one particular image I was looking at the other day on your Instagram that was you um, on a kind of mattress on a, a on a lake or something or a pond. Yeah, and it was, it was... I have a pond in my garden and I did a photo shoot on a blow up mattress. It was that was that was I looked at that and I was like, wow, that's that's a phenomenal image. That really is everyone should go and check it out right now. Um do you do you think that that, that, that consistency and, and and taking that that side of the photography, do you think that's something that helps to enhance the brand? Um Do you mean the fact that I model specifically? Do I think that that Sort of more the fact that um, you, you're sort of consistent with the, with with the, the the branding and the the entire um, look of, of products from from conception to to the photography side of things. Uh, okay, so I should probably say here that the amazing images on the pond were taken by Elliot Howells. Um, yeah, he's a photographer that I just worked with this one off. He does like all sorts of different work. He's not really like a scene photographer or anything, but his work is amazing. Um, definitely, a lot. Of- he, he, sh- he should do more if that's what he produces. Definitely, yes. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff that I shoot day to day for like my website and stuff, I kind of um, set it up myself, um, and I have been doing this for a few years. Um, as I mentioned before, I did use the model before I started um, Eustratia and I used to model for a lot of different brands and I used to work with a lot of other, other models and I used to really love doing this. I loved like the kind of like community aspect of it and being creative with other people and when I first started the brand, I thought that I wasn't going to model for it at all. Um, that was my idea. But from the very first photo shoot, somebody couldn't make it. One of the models had to pull out at the last minute and I had to replace her. So okay. I was like, oh, this is convenient. Like, I won't <laughs> find shoots, but if anybody can't come for any reason, I can just replace them. So that's great. Of course. Um, so I started doing that and I c- continued to work with as many different models as possible, maybe for like four years. And then yeah. um, I noticed that occasionally I would have problems with images like, uh, I don't know, using them for flyers or with advertising or putting them on the internet. And I thought that it was a shame because I didn't want to upset anybody, but also I didn't want my hard work to go to waste. Like if somebody wanted yeah, their image taken down or something like that. Yeah. So it just became like more of a matter of convenience um, to arrange my own shoot um just like in my house um i I use like my partner to take the photos uh or sometimes i shoot them myself as well like more recently i've started doing a lot of self-portraits and i just model the clothes myself because then i know what size to make all of the samples um and it's very easy it's like a very low maintenance shoot all i have to do is like get the clothes out just do my own hair and makeup and then wear where the <laughs> things also obviously i have my own aesthetic so like you were saying before this is how i get the images to all have like a similar uh kind of look because they are for the most part i do all the creative direction myself so yeah um it it will always have like my aesthetic and my signature and i think when you are like a one woman brand you are the brand so I yes. do I do think that in that way everything ties together. So you have um you have the opportunity to kind of see the whole process made by one person. So you're getting their unique view um on on this on this subject, on this garment, on like how, how it's made and how it's portrayed and how it's worn. Um I also think that it is very useful to do this. Because it gives me a unique perspective when I'm trying to help a client and I'm advising them. I am in the unique position of having worn every single item in my collection. True. So, yeah. 
So I can yeah. tell them with confidence what this item feels like to wear and if it is appropriate yeah. for for the reason that they need it for. Sometimes people do ask. They're like, I'm going to, I don't know, such an event, I would like to wear this outfit. Do you think that this is an appropriate outfit for this event? Will I be comfortable all night long? And sometimes I say, oh, actually, I would not recommend this item. Um, I would recommend this other one instead. Or have you thought of having like, um, this detail change to make it like this so that yeah. it's um, you know more usable or convenient so yeah I, I think that it has helped well no, that's uh, that's that, that's a nice little touch that as you say the fact that you've worn, it, worn the, the items you, you, you know you, you're in the best place to offer the advice aren't you which um, running a a business by yourself is, uh, is, 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 is super important isn't it yeah um, well, you, 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 we, we touched on there about the customers and and um, and their, their kind of their advice they they ask of you, Stacey. Moving on to those customers, you get to wear your uh, amazing designs. How important to you is is the reaction of the, pe- the customers and clients that uh, the experience and, and and try on your garments? Uh, of course, it's incredibly important. Uh, I don't think anybody who is like a handmade designer does this job to get rich. The main reason <laughs> I do it is because we want to bring um, the joy of our creations to other people. We want them to be able to to be the person that they want to be. And I'm sure that all of us have like um, a, a unique kind of perspective on that and like what kind of things we want to create for people and how we think that we can uh, bring yeah. happiness into their lives or um, give them the opportunity to be the the person or the character that they most wish to embody. So, um, yeah, it's very important. And I I love getting feedback from from customers who have really enjoyed their outfit. What's the What's the best feedback you've ever received from from somebody? Can you Can you think of a an example of um oh i don't know it's a particular it's a tough one every time somebody is is thrilled with their outfit i am happy um it doesn't matter if they um i don't know don't vocalize it in in a particularly unique way even if they just say like this is the best bra that i've ever had um that makes me super happy um obviously sometimes like the bigger creations, like the characters, sometimes you get, I don't know, like a more noteworthy reply yeah. from them. For example, I'm making um, a mermaid outfit at the moment uh, with you know, awesome. like a long skirt with scales and a clam bra and wow. like all of those things. And I am really looking forward to feedback from this person because I don't get to make these very often. I think I've only made two and in my entire time of having this design, one of them is mine. Um, so this is only the second client that I've ever made this for. So their feedback will be very important to me. Um, I don't know, it's from a creative aspect, but it won't make me any more happy than somebody who has just bought a pair of pants and thinks that they're <laughs> That's what I mean. Like everybody's happiness is, is equal and very appreciated. Yeah. Good. I like that. I like that a lot. What would you say to anyone who's um, interested in wearing latex that maybe maybe hasn't done before? Um, what what sort of advice would you give to, for, for somebody that's thinking of buying their first piece? Um, oh well, um, actually, I get this question all the time, <laughs> and I just tell them to try it, and that they will probably like it. <laughs> very simple you just, can't, you just can't do it yeah. you what? if you don't try something um i do give them advice to use dressing aid of course i think yeah. that's very course. very important we you know we all have a, a story of a friend who bought some latex leggings off i don't know some website and didn't read anything about them and just tried to put them on or got stuck in the toilets or something yeah dressing yeah. aid is important also i would say choose your garment wisely if you have never worn latex before, I probably wouldn't recommend leggings, to be honest. I don't think they're a starter item. Um, 
especially, I don't know, if you're, yeah, I would recommend probably a smaller item, uh, something that's easy to wear, something with a closure. I think it's a yeah. dress is fine as long as it has a zip. Uh, I think a skin yep. shirt is good. I think uh, lingerie is good. Um, yeah, so something quite simple probably. You don't want to be getting into like cat suits or long sleeves. Um, I think things like that that are big and that can cause an issue when you're wearing them for a long time can be problematic. I would say maybe stockings as well because people who are not experienced wearers do um, put their toe through them sometimes or have to get <laughs> on the shoes. If you're going to get stockings and you're a first-time wearer, I would definitely recommend like a footless or a stirrup kind of style. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good advice. That Stacey, good advice. One question I, I I love to ask every designer that we have on the uh, on the shining sofa here is, if you could create a, a latex outfit for anyone in the world, who would that be, and can you describe what that um, particular garment would look like? Okay, so this question has actually come at a really good time for me because I'm generally not into celebrities at all. And I just always wanted to design for like every person, like yeah. anybody. I wanted to make anybody feel special. However, um, I have recently kind of um, got more into music videos. And that is something okay. that I want to work on in the future with Eustratia more because I feel like it would satisfy me creatively and i feel like a lot of the themes of music videos at the moment really appeal to me and would really i don't know fit with with my style of designing uh, yeah this leads me to to my person who i would really like to dress at the moment who is poppy and i think that okay the yeah music videos at the moment are i don't know I like them. I really like what you're wearing in them. And I would like to make an outfit that is along those lines. Um, I don't really know what I would make. I think it would depend on the theme of whatever video she had coming up. But maybe like a nude katsu with embellishments. Something kind of futuristic, but like reminiscent of armor with like embellished shoulder pads maybe something like that some sort of headpiece yeah. um maybe with an eye cover or maybe something even more surreal i don't know i have many ideas sounds good sounds good and and, and pop is a great choice because because she has she has worn the odd bit of latex in the past with uh yeah. I, think, I think it may be maybe vex she was she was she'd wore previously i don't um Dinah was but um yeah i have seen her wear bits of latex yeah, yeah, I like that one. I like that one. Oh. So, um, what's uh, what's next? For the brand. What's next for Eustratia? What's what's coming up? What what can you tease us with, Stacey? What's uh, what's, what's um, coming up in the next few months? Okay, so I've made a couple of dresses recently for a TV show. Um, I'm working with a couple of bands, doing some outfits for them. Um, right. potentially a film and like I said potentially some some music videos that is the thing that I would mostly like to focus on I've only got a few maybes at the moment uh, but if anybody wants to hook me up with a, an amazing creative <laughs> video um, yeah get in touch that well, there you go folks get, get in contact yes yeah that's um, now that they, they all sound they all sound uh, brilliant and um we look forward to seeing more about oh, them. I also have a they, uh, coming out. I didn't mention that because it only only um, depends on myself. But I am <laughs> creating a collection and I'm going back to my roots. And there will be a couple of corsets in this new collection. And one of them is going to be an Elizabethan style corset with a removable like um, kind of like breastplate in the middle. Yeah. So wow. It's interchangeable. So you can buy the base corset and then you can buy like the different designs to put in the middle. So it's like you have many corsets. 
I think I'm going to do, I don't know, at least three or four different ones. So then you could just like buy the middle panel separately and attach it to your corset and have like a whole new outfit. That's, that sounds phenomenal. I like that one. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, exciting. Look forward to that one. That's, I'd um, like it. Hmm. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> well, we'll definitely, without a doubt, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be there for that. One hundred percent. Cool. I think. Uh, I think. Unfortunately, Stacey, that's um, kind of all we've got time for today. I'm afraid. Um, before we uh, say goodbye, do you want to um, give everyone a reminder about uh, where they can find you online, where they can follow you on socials, and um, okay, if you want to uh, to go and give you a follow, I would love it if everybody could follow me on Instagram at. Latex by Eustratia. I had to change this because um, my account got hacked. So yep. um, I did have quite quite a good Instagram account with a, quite a good amount of followers, but unfortunately, this is no longer the case. So um, self story over here. Please follow me on Instagram. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am also on TikTok. Um, yeah, and I have also updated my website this week to include videos on the listings which I think might be helpful for a few people. So um, if you were thinking of buying something, hopefully I've made it a little bit easier for you. Well, it's fantastic. Uh, been, uh, yeah, been built to speak to you, Stacey. Thank you. And um, find out about that, that clear passion that you've got for a latex fashion. It's, um, yeah, come across without a doubt. And um, appreciate your time. Thank you. And on, Thanks uh, so much for having me. I'm sure we'll, uh, sure we'll speak again soon. Yes, we will. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this episode of The Shining Sofa. Many thanks to our special guest, Stacey, for being with us today. We hope you found The Shining Sofa comfy and will join us again next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to your podcast and be sure to head over to latex247.co.uk for all the latest latex fashion news and reviews. Thank you.